subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. He does not need your ibadah, does not need your concentration. Allah is not waiting for your charity. Allah's kingdom and dominion does not increase with your dhikr and tasbih and ruku'a and sujood. We need Allah. We need Allah. We need Allah. The issue of salat, the problem that we are facing with salat is that salat has to do with spirituality. It has to do with feelings that come through your heart and thoughts that come through your mind. A successful Muslim, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Verily, the believers are successful. They are the ones who have khushu' in their salat. They pray properly. They stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. A crucial step, a crucial cornerstone in achieving this target is to know who you're standing in front of. Who are you speaking to? Which words are you reading? These feelings, this set of feelings, they have to come through your heart and the more they take you on, the more they are, the more they are in your heart, the better your salat is. And the weaker these thoughts and feelings come to your heart, the weaker your prayer is. Most of us, my brothers and sisters, when we stand in our salat, we are daydreaming. That's the honest truth. 90% of us, we are daydreaming in our salat. We're not even thinking of what we are supposed to think about. The thought of thinking, of thinking, of thinking of something doesn't exist. Why? Because the intention is not there, the strength is not there, the understanding is not there. This is why briefly, inshallah, what feelings, what emotions must come through our hearts standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can we assist? How can we basically amplify these feelings? Number one, knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Who am I talking to? Who am I standing in front of? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, does not need us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. He does not need your ibadah, does not need your concentration. Allah is not waiting for your charity. Allah's kingdom and dominion does not increase with your dhikr and tasbih and ruku' and sujood. We need Allah. We should be honored. Every single one of us, the second you make that fear, the second you say Allahu Akbar, should be honored that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed you a window of opportunity to speak to him, to stand before him. This is why the ulama say, whoever wants to talk to Allah, he should pray. You want to talk to Allah, start praying. When you're praying, you are directly with no barriers, with no intermediaries, with no interpreters, you are speaking to your Lord, your Creator. This is why it's very, very important that we realize who we're talking to, my brothers. It's a small brief hadith. You know, Allahu Akbar, the understanding. The understanding we should have who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, The heavens have squeaked. You know when you jump on a horse or a camel, the saddle makes a squeaky, a squeaky noise from the weight. The heavens have squeaked, squeaked and they have a right to squeak. Our Prophet is saying, our teacher is saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's no space of four fingers in all this universe. إِلَّا وَمَلَكٌ سَاجِدٌ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى Except that there is an angel who has prostrated his head before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every four fingers, billions and billions of angels, billions and billions of creations of Allah are continuously praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تُسَبِّحُ لَهُ السَّمَوَاتُ السَّبْرُ The seven heavens and what it contains and what is in there. تُسَبِّحُ لَهُ السَّمَوَاتُ السَّبْرُ وَالْأَرْضُ and the land. وَمَنْ فِيهِنْ and everyone inside them and everyone within the boundaries. تُسَبِّحُ لَهُ السَّمَوَاتُ السَّبْرُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَنْ فِيهِنْ وَإِنْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَوْنَ تَسْبِحًا Everything is praising Allah. Rock, land, tree, whatever it is, is praising Allah, glorifying Allah. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَوْنَ تَسْبِحًا إِنَّهُ كَانَ حَلِيمًا but you don't understand, you don't comprehend the praise, you can't hear the praise. But everything is praising Allah. Allah is not in need of you. Allah is not in need of you standing, you know, feeling obliged like most of us. Why, why do we pray? Majority of us, my brothers, says we pray to offload the obligation. Alhamdulillah, I finished my salat. If you come and stand before Allah with this intention, are you unaware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly what is going for your heart at that stage? When you come and say, you know, I just want to get over and done with. You know these feelings that come to us, we don't say them in public. 
No one comes and says, Allah, خلصت بقى, let's pray. No one says that. No one says that. It's married. Allah, get, get up and done with خلصت بقى. No. We say, let's go pray. No, in my heart, we can pray. Allah, please, let's go. Let's go. Over and done with. This feeling that I'm praying just to offload the, the burden of salat is not the right feeling you should have. You should be honored, my brothers and sisters, wallahi, in issues of dunya. When we deal in our dunya here with human beings like us, wallahi, subhanallah, if you stand in front of someone you're afraid of, like a judge in court, or a bully of some sort in Auburn, or a, you know, a, a, a president, a prime minister, an ASIO agent, wherever you stand in front of, what happens to you naturally, without no motivation, without no one to have to give you a seven step course of how to fear him, naturally speaking, subhanAllah, your heart starts pounding. You feel something. When you stand in front of the judge and he's about to uh, no, announce the decision whether you've got 15 years in jail or not, your heart starts pounding naturally. No one needs to give you a course. Why? Because we are aware of who this person is. I know who he is. I know what authority he has. I know what he can do. I know what he can decide now. He can wreck my life. And because I know this, naturally, the feeling, the emotion comes naturally. The problem is when we deal with Allah, these feelings do not exist. You stand before Allah and you're daydreaming. We all know Allah's, Allah knows what's in your heart. But it does not move anything in you. Every blue moon, every now and then, maybe in Ramadan when you're feeling down, something like that. You know, you're going through trouble with your family, you want to get married. You get some emotion. Other than that, our salat is just far off where it should be. Why? We're unaware who you are standing in front of. The understanding. That Allah now subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed you to speak to him. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, wallahi. We see Muslims in this dunya. They get to meet a sinner. Let's say an actor or an actress or a boxer of some sort. And they are so overwhelmed by the fact that they had an opportunity to get his signature or her signature. They're just so overwhelmed. They would say that we out there, they'll be speechless. I'm actually standing in front of you, I can't believe it. And they'll be so, you know, they'll be so touched that, you know, he's allowed on five minutes of his time. We have these feelings with Mashaikh even. Sometimes the super chef comes from overseas and we find all the boys in the, you know, Allah, I'm, not, I'm giving him Salaam, I can't believe it. SubhanAllah, every time I see such a situation, it always reminds me of Allah. SubhanAllah, who is this person? Regardless, all ranks preserved. Who is this person? The chef once said, Imagine if you were to meet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what would you feel? Imagine if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I'll give you five minutes of my time, come meet me. What would you think? Would you daydream? Would you be sitting with Rasulullah thinking of your wife? Would you be sitting in front of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thinking about work? No way on earth. Why? Prophet of Allah is he. You'll be taken. You'll be absorbed in the discussion. But subhanAllah, we stand before Allah every day five times daydreaming. Why? We are unaware who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And how patient is Allah? How merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers? Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing, seeing what's in your heart. He gave you everything. He gave you the wife you're busy with. He gave you the husband you're busy with. He gave you the job you're thinking of. He gave you everything you're thinking about that's distracting you from Him. And He knows that. And he's patient with you. He is Halim subhanahu wa ta'ala. He still accepts you. He still allows you. You know, subhanAllah. Imagine a prime minister allows a peasant to come and meet him for five minutes. Says, all right, you have problems, come. I'll allow you to meet the prime minister. But the peasant comes, he enters the office, and he starts playing with things around in the office, forgets about the prime minister. What will happen to this guy? He'll be banned. You will never ever have a chance to meet the Prime Minister again. Why? You're an idiot. We allowed you the chance. We opened the door for you. And you don't want to you don't want to present your situation. You don't want to say anything. You want to you get busy with something else. Why did you come? Likewise, imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the King of Kings, five times a day, allows you an opportunity to speak to him, to complain to him, to beg of him, to ask of him, and you are dead. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still allows you. Allah doesn't ban you. Allah doesn't say, this guy is disrespectful. No, no, Allah is patient. Allah waits subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will understand. You will come back. So very, very important. Step on who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is.